Hey there, fellow achiever, and welcome to another day of the Business Unfiltered vlog where we are going behind the scenes for 30 days of business and life as an achiever. So this weekend we decided to go up to Portland, Maine, and really it's it's a great lesson, to be honest, when it comes to business as well, because the reason why we are taking this mini road trip, it's probably about four-ish hours from where we live, is to buy one thing, beer. So my husband loves craft beer and getting different kinds and all this great stuff. And there is a beer that he tried, I think last fall, fell in love with it, but it doesn't come out all the time. So this is their first run that they're gonna be doing for this season. Now, I don't know if I can show you guys, but I'm gonna try. Let me see. Can you see what's going on over there? Yes, this big old line of people that are willing to wait, knowing that the chances of them getting this beer may be a little small today because there's a lot of people and not a lot of beer for them to buy. Now, the other part of this is that we're probably going to be in this line maybe an hour, two hours, I'm guessing. Yesterday, we went to a different brewery on the way. We stopped in Massachusetts, saw some friends, and we waited two hours in line for beer, which to me feels crazy because I'm, I'm really just not a craft beer person. However, they have absolutely mastered having or being oversubscribed in their business. So they have more people who want their stuff than what they can actually put out there. Same thing for you, right? Like you cannot give one-on-one -on -one to everyone in your tribe. However, you can create a demand for it, which gives you this consistent stream of people who are buying from you. Same thing with any programs, products, like any business can do this. However, the one thing I love seeing about this as we like travel around and collect different beers for him and his friends to trade and try and all that kind of stuff, to be honest, I just go for the ride. Um, but the amazing thing of watching this is the fact that something as simple as a $3 can or a $5 can, whatever they're priced, repeatedly sells out every time they have this release. And this is multiple breweries that do this. Like I've seen it across the board and it's because they have mastered one, who it is that they serve. So they are really dialed in with, we're not creating beer for the masses. We're creating them for specific tastes, specific likes, specific people who know the value of good beer versus like Bud Light, right? Um, so they know the value of what is happening. They're willing to wait in line for that value. Same thing with like concerts and things like that, right? You have raving fans, same thing. So they are speaking to a very specific audience. And the second thing is they know where they stand. So they're making things that are in their skill set. They are mastering whatever it is they do and putting out repeatedly good beer because of that. Same thing for your business. If you are really dialed in with your strengths and your skill sets and just honoring that, then guess what? You would have a wait list too going on because you are absolutely mastering your craft, whatever that is, and not trying to do what everybody else is doing out there. So these breweries aren't focused on what everyone else is doing. They are specifically dialed in with what their strengths are in creating their recipes and all that good stuff. So there are just so many lessons here between one, knowing who you serve and honoring them, knowing you're not here to speak to the masses. You have a niche and those niche people are going to come out and line up, right? Big time. And yes, I have a quacker in my car and I would blow it, except I would probably make you guys hate me for life if I did that really loud on this video. But they are honoring their people. They're not trying to serve the masses. They're not trying to serve everyone. They know who their niche is and that their niche will show up. So they trusted in that. Number two is that they own their strengths. So they are not trying to create every different kind of craft beer out there. They're creating the ones that whoever they're, and I do not know the name of the person who actually like creates the recipes. Sorry, any beer people, like I said, that this is my husband's jam, not necessarily mine. But that person 
is really sticking with what their strengths are like really tapping into that for themselves which makes people understand the value of what they have and really honor that so if you are looking to have these booked out businesses or these sell out courses or programs or whatever you're doing are you really niching down to your people are you creating this oversubscribed culture where there are more people who want what you have than what you can deliver which is a great thing because you don't want to overstretch yourself instead you want to make it that hey this is all that i have left and this is the honest truth when it's gone it's gone if you want it, now is the time to take action. You create that demand for your niche, your specific people that you're meant to serve, not just, hey, we create this for the masses and we're selling 800,000 of them to anyone and we are catering to every taste and we are doing everything for everyone. And then guess what? You get no lines, you get no wait list because you are not creating a culture of diehard fans, of people who really do respect what you do and want it and understand the importance of it, which is something that I am seeing time and time again. These craft breweries are small, right? They're definitely like not the big guys out there as far as distribution and all this kind of stuff. So just like in the online space, you go, oh, I just need more people. I need more of this. I need more of this. No, you actually need to niche down and honor where you are. Honor those people and serve them in a huge way with your specific gifts, your specific niche. So the more I see this, the more I am just challenging myself to continue to refine in my business, continue to simplify. It's not about having all the things at all. It's about knowing who you serve, how you serve them, and really honing in on the two of those things so that you can create this incredible tribe around you who stands for what you stand for, believes in the mission that you have, and they are looking to create something amazing in their lives as well. So we have this whole tribe at you know, just this brewery, like I said yesterday, it was the same thing um, for a totally different brewery is you will have those lifers for your brand that are willing to do what it takes to get in line for what it is that you have to offer. But first, you have to really be specific for them. So who they are, how you serve them, and then go out there and do it and trust it that it is not about serving everyone. It's about serving your people. And these breweries have freaking mastered this craft and I love 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 witnessing it even if it involves me standing in line but I'll be honest I usually get a killer lunch after it so I'm totally okay with it um so I hope you guys are having a great weekend um I hope if anything this helped with somebody who needs to niche down in their business really own their skill sets and stop trying to serve everyone and be everything to everyone your unique skill is absolutely enough and if you really do refine it for yourself and you're willing to trust in it you will have a business that is absolutely oversubscribed with people waiting to work with you and you'll never have to worry about filling your spots or your programs again so i'll see you tomorrow enjoy your weekend guys